Almost lost it. Yeah, it absolutely was. But uh, going in here, you said they are going to be warmed up. The guys from Stay Green, they had a clean and clear 2-0 over ADN. Yep. It was, of course, taking a little bit of time, but they got there in the end. Yep. So right now, Stay Green back on what some would say is, uh, you know, some hollowed ground for them. Winning GSL 13 in this very building. They're back here looking for another championship. Right now standing in their way, Neo MRR. Stay Green with wins here, secures first place in the group and advancement into the semifinals tomorrow. This is an important match. The draft has started. Let's get on in. So Nova already, we're seeing the bands come out right here. Sir Bensington is being addressed as Big the doo -doo -doo. pretty strong hero. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have said it several times now. Probably the hero of the tournament. And as you made it clear, they're going to ban it every single series. And that's exactly what they're doing. Pestilence being the next ban here. That might actually be an SEA ban, although Pestilence has seen uh, some play in the international scene as well. But the SEA teams really favor that hero over many other mid choices. Slytherin and Ophelia being addressed here by KSSA, also known as Color X. And with that, we're going to have a Parasite and Puppet Master first pick. Yeah, Puppet Master first pick. MRR was actually uh, at the receiving end of a Puppet Master by FF earlier today. And that was, of course, when he got up to about 700 gold per minute. They were playing their own bushwhack, but just couldn't keep up with FF while well, free farming right there. And uh, definitely going to go ahead and try to do the same with their own Puppet Master. But going back to Pestilence, this is one that Swinemon still values pretty dang highly. Despite him being nerfed a little bit, Pesty is definitely Melons, one of his favorite heroes to play and pick for his team. So maybe a little bit of a targeted ban there in addition to being a regional ban. But now Rhapsody coming out as the support hero for the guys that stay green. Yeah, Rhapsody pretty early picked in the stages. Um, not really surprising here. Many teams have seen. Uh, we've seen with many teams that they favor Rhapsody over most other supports, even uh, heroes like Engineer, and it also depends on the playstyle, of course. And Puppet Master was not only the hero MRI were on the receiving end of against Cats Gaming, also in the second game where they completely stomped Cats Gaming. They had a Puppet Master themselves that was having 600 GPM when the enemy carrier 200. Yeah. So definitely showing that they do know how to use this hero quite effectively. And they're going to be trying to do so once more. They're going to go ahead and uh, go into a little bit of their reserve time here as they're taking a little bit extra, making sure that they are going to be picking the correct hero. And already on the other side with Rhapsody and Parasite, you're not exactly sure what State Green's going to be running. They haven't given away any kind of strategy because they still have the gank potential as well as push potential in these heroes. But it's going to be your favorite, Nova. The Kronos. Oh God. Please, no, Kronos. Uh, I've been playing, um, actually I've been back in Germany for two months, and or one and a half months, and I'm playing a lot of high TMM, and there was not a single game out of 100 games without Kronos, so I'm delighted to see that hero being played here. And now with Gauntlet, we at least see the dual lane here coming out of SG. You brought up a really good point. If you have the two supports being picked first, you usually don't give away much of your lineup. None of the lanes are settled. Rhapsody can lane everywhere, Parasite can go both jungles, especially Parasite, compared to maybe something like a Keep of the Force or even Legionnaire. He has the capability of going sure. both jungles, so you don't give away anything. And even now, Rhapsody Gauntlet, that could be a pseudo-aggressive trident, that could be dual lane middle, that could even to an extent be a dual shard, which we probably will not see, but the possibil possibility is there. However, yeah. Kronos. Kronos on the other side, I mean, you're going to have to do something, because this hero, when thrown into the suicide lane, he just kind of wins. Like, there's very few oh, matchups yeah. that he's not able to come out at least even in. And as they pick up a torture right here, this is not really giving away too much either. Could be going into the middle lane. Could be babysitting Puppet Master short. It's going to depend on these next sets of picks. But uh, you were talking earlier about the possibilities of something like a pseudo-aggressive tri-lane with the yep. three heroes that State Green's already showing. When I was talking with the players here from the NAEU teams, they were talking about generally their strategies against the SEA teams not necessarily meeting the aggression. Exactly. Even the guys of BMG, they're like, we love going aggressive, but that's what the bread and butter is for MRR, S2Y. Yep. They're aggressive teams. If you can slow the pace of the game down, you're going to give yourselves the best chance to win. So maybe going aggressive here for State Green could bite them if that's their choice. Definitely agree with you there, and that's why I think we won't see a pseudo try lane long lane. We'll probably see we're starting a dual lane middle with a parasite, and I mean, the thing is, you could actually have the Rhapsody on the short line and have a solo gauntlet middle because Rhapsody is one of the very few supports that can 
deal with those tanky melee offlaners such as Kronos who goes for a very quick iron shield and there's almost no support that can actually touch that hero. In fact, the hero actually turns around and hunts down the supports. If you have a Glacius, for instance, she has huge trouble against a Kronos. Rhapsody, however, is able to interrupt the attacks of a Kronos, is able to get own attacks in between sure. herself. So Rhapsody is one of the best zoners as a support. Yeah, and we'll see if she is indeed going to be down there in that matchup. But right now, the second set of bands are coming out. Swinomon's addressing one that he personally hates, Miss Sirs. Yep. And one that is able to, of course, uh, take over any kind of farmed carry, a Kronos or a Puppet Master that would have been absolutely insane to, to get, but not going to see it in this game. Also being banned out, War Beast, Bubbles, Wretched Hang, heroes that have some suicide potential. Is, uh, I mean, maybe you're going to be looking for a suicide here for Stay Green. They're not going to be able to select from those. And then a Tempest, making it all the way to the second picking phase, was banned out there with one of the final bans. Yep. I would more so like to address the Dr. Repulsor ban, as this is actually pretty smart in my opinion. There is, as we talked, the potential for a pseudo tri lane long lane here for SG side. And Doctor is one of those few heroes that storms melees, even a Kronos. So you don't want to have him sitting on the short lane sure. in a 1v1 situation, Kronos suffering, and then you're actually suffering on your short lane as well, because that is a really strong pseudo try. So not going to be seeing that this time, but instead they're going to get the Kraken. And I talked to Swindamount last week. And he was talking about how he's not sure where he fits in with the team so much. Before, he was their middle player. He's playing heroes like Deadwood, Pebbles. They're initiators. You get a portal key and you go. That position is not always there anymore. That's moved more toward, like, your hooking heroes, like your Gauntlet, your Devourer, or even so just going, like, du dual range lanes. Swinomons has moved into the suicide position quite often, and he's saying, maybe that I need to be picking up these heroes for limp, but now... You've got an interesting situation. Engineer. You've got a Gauntlet, which is a Limp Hero, and Kraken, which is the Limp Hero. Which one is Swindamon's going to play? Because I haven't seen him play either of these heroes before. I'm not sure. Just a quick reminder, in the first game against ADN, he was actually playing a Dr. Repulsor. So He's all over the place right yep, now. All over the place right now. So I'm sure that with all this experience that he has, he is going to be able to play either of those two heroes. But between Gauntlet and Kraken, I would favor Limp. I would rather like to see Limp on the Gauntlet because it's a more specific hero. Both sure. heroes obviously have a decent skill ceiling. It's not like they're just arc click heroes or whatever. You can also screw up with the Kraken quite badly. Yeah. But I think that Swindle should probably play the Kraken here. Yeah. Are we gonna, or maybe we even see a farming Kraken. That's possible too. We will see. I mean, I take back what I said before. I've seen Swindle on Kraken before. It's just not one of his frequent okay. heroes that he's on. I've seen him in TMM and even a few competitive matches in the past that he has been on this Kraken. So I have no doubt that he's going to be able to drop that Whirlpool on top of people and kill. Of course, yes. No doubt whatsoever. Like you said, a highly experienced player. But now the highly experienced team, Stay Green, has 25 seconds to pick their pick. They don't need it. CD coming out. And what do you make now of this Stay Green lineup? I almost would have liked Crack. I almost would have liked to see Kraken go against Kronos because he is a very good shot at, at winning the lane handily there as well. But CD is almost as good. You just link the Kronos. It has a cooldown, but Kronos is forced to leap away if he doesn't want to take huge amounts of damage or just forfeit the lane for about 10 seconds. So. Corrupted Disciple, definitely a good hero against the Kronos as well. Kronos won't die ever, of course. Um, but there is a possibility for Corrupted forcing so much mana out of Kronos that Parasite could actually come in. But, as we saw in the All-Star match yesterday, Minance of Parasite is not exactly ganking too much on the early levels. So, it's probably going to be a lot of farming. We have an extremely aggressive setup here from the Hellbound side though. So, is Parasite forced to help out his team? Or is SG going to be able to just hold their ground while he farms away and completely overcomes the two supports here for the Hellborn side? Yep, we'll see. We'll see indeed. And there's the ready up on Chessie. I was paying very close attention to who was ready up on what hero. As it is going to be Swindlewilds now on Corrupted Disciple. And that could be a suicide CD. We talked last night with BMG who were yep. talking about their uh, past of running the suicide corrupt to disciple and the different matchup where he does excel this could be one where we'll see Swindomons going into that top lane it's all going to be about the stacked regen and immediately going to be stacking enough regen to Swindomons that he's going to get some totems and he's going to probably sell one of those minor totems here and buy some boots either that or get one creep kill and then the boots afterwards so that's possible not as well. right away but ASAP of course 
And as we're going to have a slightly longer pause here with toilet break, etc., because why not do it before the game? You can also do it right now. Um, the interesting part is we do have a super aggressive lineup here from the Hell One side, but we probably will still see the Kronos long lane. Yes. And we probably will see exactly that, the Kraken versus Kronos matchup that we talked about right now that we would prefer to see. So that already favors SG. Sure. Then you have this aggressive potential here coming out from the Hellbone side, but where are they going to strike? What do they want to hit? Corrupted Disciple can actually sit at the tower for 10 minutes without his team having heavy losses because Parasite is just going to farm away. He will recover later. Mid lane. Gauntlet can be a very defensive hero. We saw amazing hooks yesterday. Oh, we actually saw them today from Mr. Suns in the first series that we casted between BMG Long and S2Y. <laughs> yep. And there were really good hooks in there um, when he had to escape from, from gangs coming. Still, I don't really know what they want to do with their dual support here. Yeah, it's going to be rather interesting to see where they place those and as you had mentioned earlier, Minuts, once he's going to be able to get even the smallest amount of farm, he will be feeding on those underlevel supports. Yep. We saw Minuts yesterday making X Sign's life a living hell. Yep. XI actually played a really good game yesterday, but he had no chance once the Parasite had a Codex. He just fed on him, and sure. he had like 1,000 Wild Hunters, but that's besides the point. I mean, <laughs> we know hunters. the style. <laughs> we know the style here from sure. from from Minus, and I'm sure that MRO should know this style as well. So, will they be able to capitalize on that? Will they change the lanes? Will they have a lot of roaming? If they do a lot of roaming, they need to make it work. They need to get kills. If they don't get kills and just force SG to play a little bit passive on the mid and top lane, that's not enough. The parasite will overcome those two supports no matter what. Yep, he, he certainly will, but uh, while we're sitting here at this pause, I, I'm kind of taking a look around here, and there is a lot of people here right now, Nova. Like, this event was pretty packed yesterday, and right now it is a literal sea of people around us. We're hoping to be able to get some of those shots throughout the day, you know, the camera swinging around and whatnot. And we'll even be going into the crowd a little bit later on today to do some roaming interviews and whatnot, but there are a lot of people down here. And when you talk about the nation of Thailand and their love for Heroes of New Earth, like, that is not exaggerated. No, there are a lot of people here, and there's hundreds of people that are sitting around watching on the screens right now as these teams play. And when Han takes the main stage tomorrow for the semifinals and grand finals, this place is just going to become electric. Yep, absolutely. I mean, the interesting part is, actually, soccer is about the the biggest passion in Thailand they have for soccer, pretty much. Still, Heroes of New Earth is actually a bigger game than FIFA, and FIFA has played a lot, but Heroes of New Earth is literally the most played game here and the most yeah the game the people are passionate about the most as well and Garina has been doing a really good job at uh, supporting this passion as well so that's why we can have such an event such an event here like the GSL with all those amazing setups that we talked about earlier yeah absolutely and uh, of course the players they make their way down here and they're definitely some celebrities down here that don't get to make it down here i mean you're you're no stranger to being a han celebrity in the nation but uh the guys from stay green especially have so many fans these guys are role models to the thai players and they just come up with so much respect and deference they come up please can i take a picture with you yeah. like you you've taught me how to play jungle you've taught me how to play x role here and it's just really been a pleasure to be down at this event so far and we've got so many great games on the way and I'm ready to get back into this one here pretty soon hopefully they're gonna be ready in just a second the guys from uh, MRR of course uh, I think both teams were actually needing to take a break because they did have some longer series earlier on so need to take yeah, a quick break true. and use the I mean, they had a decent break in between the games but um, yeah it looked like they needed another small pause here um, headsets are being taken on again so I hope that we're gonna get started anytime soon here that would be very good to do. Of course, you can so see the uh, cameras down there. The players getting ready and whatnot. Let's go quickly over the players. I'll do the Hellborn side here. As go we have Torture it. being played by God KSSA, also known as Color X. And Eversay, now known as MVP. And, er and Eversay is going to play the Engineer. That's the support duo for you. Magmus is going to be played by Cheetah One. He is one of the mid players in the Asian scene. Ronald's being taken by 071. I already talked with Nick about it. I don't know why he's called 071 when he has a B in the name, but yeah. that's just how it is. And Punk Pang, also known as Dooku, or Daiku, is playing the Puppet Master here. And uh, he's going to 
play against a Kraken carry or a duo of a Corrupted Disciple carry and a Kraken carry. Well, there you go. They're going to have uh, quite Let's the work cut out for him indeed. But Dooku, they, he did have a pretty stellar Bushwhack game earlier today, followed up by that Puppet Master game. So his puppet skills are all warmed up. On the other side, they're going to be going up against Chessy, currently making his way into the short lane on Kraken. No stacked regen. Parasite actually going into lane with just two mana potions right now. And he's got a little bit of money saved up in the bank to be able to purchase perhaps the Blood Chalice or some Rev Wards if he's going to need it. Gauntlet is hanging out down here in the bottom jungle as well. Stacked one region on top of a shield and hatchet. So perhaps he's considering uh, making his way back to the middle lane where he will likely join Z Freak. Rhapsody is set up so that he has a rune here at the top already. And Corrupted Disciple in the top lane. Stacked two sets of regen. And he's got the money for boots if he wants to buy them. Just needs three additional gold. Yep. Parasite actually pulled 200 in terms of region to the Corrupted, yeah. as you mentioned earlier. And uh, another health potion has been pulled to Gauntlet from Rhapsody, who also bought the wards. No Korea upgrade just yet for either team, actually. Which is not necessary that early, especially with the nerf to the shield. It's not like you can scout a lot. You can't block camps anymore, etc. So it's definitely one of the reasons why we don't see that early Korea upgrades anymore. Usually with the first two one to go on the support. Now, I want to talk about this ward right here, Nova. There is a very early lane ward coming out for Dooku in the top lane. And does Puppet really need this? Does he think that he's going to get aggressive try lane? Yeah, he definitely thinks so, and he's right about it as well, because there is a Rhapsody together with the Duke Corrupt Disciple top there. However, I think the Rhapsody is there because if the support overextends, she wants to kill the Torture together with the Corrupt Disciple. She's not really targeting the Puppet Master here. That early land ward we actually saw against Cats as well. Cats even counter warding with a solo cracking against that early land ward for some reason. <laughs> and, uh, yep, yeah, that's pretty pretty standard in Asia to have a very early lane ward, even if you are against off laners, per se. Yeah, really trying to protect those short lanes where, I mean, down here they really do emphasize having the maximum amount of farm on that carry player and whatnot. So, at least right now, going to be pretty safe up in that position. Z Freak had already dropped his own ward of sight, trying to get that and uh, make sure that he's going to be able to be safe from any rotation from the middle lane. And speaking of that rotation, already right now, Ever say is coming over. Rhapsody is going to provide the damage from the high ground, though. They're going to go into a little bit of a shooting battle. And Engineer going to drop a keg. Not the perfect keg, as Rhapsody is able to get the Staccatos off. Going to be able to get quite a bit of damage right here. Probably one more auto attack. And just like that, Engineer going to force the health potion. Yeah, he's already forced the health potion. The problem, however, for the Rhapsody is that if Torture and Engineer are both coming, they might actually be able to sandwich, sandwich to the hero. Obviously, there is a link on Corrupted. There is always something to keep in mind. And, uh, I mean, the, the killing potential isn't too high, so Rhapsody is doing exactly what she needs to do. Put as much harass out as possible, since they don't really want to go for kills. And Parasite, only two currently. Is that hard to block somehow? Or did he just farm both? There is Wild Hunters already. Minot already has a good game. Yeah, Minot's right, already got, uh, make that four Wild Hunters. And two Minotaurs! So a pretty good start there yeah. for Mr. Minot. You, of course, do get slightly less experience from the uh, Minotaurs. They're one of the worst camps in terms of farming, but they make up for it at least a little bit in terms of their killing potential with that stomp. Now, in the bottom lane, Kraken versus Kronos. You're taking a look at that one, and Kronos sitting on 6-2 and two CS here, but Chessy is already up at 11-1, yep. and they've been going back and forth quite a bit in terms of damage, but 7 t one He's uh, definitely pounding in those autos on the Kraken. Yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. But Kraken is one of the good heroes against melee sure. heroes for sure. Be yeah, because of the splash mostly and the whole hero design. But I mean, Kronos is standing his ground. I would like him to see... Oh, actually, the wave is pushing into the tower, so he should be able to get some more pre-kills here if he doesn't... Yep, he's doing a... Oh, decent job overall. Now he has to split his attention ah. again. He's going to have a 10 and 2 right now against a 14 and 2. Okay, that is fine. Middle 11 and 1 for Cheetah 1. Now against the dual lane here. With the Gauntlet having 16 and 4 already. Oh, and there's the hook coming in right here. The Infernal Instability, but Engineer is in place. And there's the stun coming in from Magnus. Followed up by the keg. It's going to be Lim going down right here. As Eversay comes in to clean that kill. And MRR goes up first on the board. Yep, first kill here on Lim. That was interesting because I don't think that 
as she was actually hoping for a kill here on the Magnus. They yeah. wanted to put out some harass, but Magnus, since he wasn't in a 1v1 situation, they knew that he had a bottle already, so harass is not as important anymore. Now bottom lane, Kraken being forced to use the Tsunami charge to get away from Kronos. Kronos does have boots, as Kraken does not, and I'm surprised that 07T1 is not actually forcing the issue here. Do you think that he could get the kill on the Kraken if he really goes for it, as he is right now? And looking for a bash. He should have a first hit bash. There it is. Now the tsunami charge is available. So yeah, time to fall back. Yep. I don't think that he needed to pressure, uh, put the pressure here on Kraken or go for the go for the kill even. I think he's doing really fine. I'm not entirely sure about the health cube first here on the Kraken, but might actually oh, oh, even get interrupts the, the health so. potion here. And the boots versus no boots situation coming into play. Kronos does not have a bash. But this is going to force Kraken way back. He does have that life too. But if Kronos is able to regain some lane control. Oh, and there's the bash actually. No time leap available, but Kronos is going all the way to town. Meanwhile, in the top river, Stay Green equalizes the kills by taking out the Engineer. A combination of the two players in mid and a roaming Swinomons coming from the top lane. They make that one happen. Yeah, they do. 19 and 10 here for the Puppet Master compared to the 3 and 2 for Corrupted Disciple. It's not too much of a surprise, although Corrupted Disciple was mostly in creep vicinity, it's still, Puppet has a lot of damage himself, of course. I'm really surprised about that bottom lane. I saw Minus actually heading slightly towards that lane for about two seconds, and then he just backs off again, because I can imagine that Chessy was asking for help, and then he's being went on again with a bash, as you saw there, and then he was like, never mind, just go farm, because this is not going to work, we're not going to kill the Kronos. And now he's TP back on lane, Kronos has level 6, now Rhapsody even coming to the bottom lane. Yeah, going to be trying to zone out the Kronos. Perhaps Mr. Jesse saying to his team, hey, I'm not in the best situation down here. I went life tube first and I uh, almost just died. I need some help. And Rhapsody trying to put in that help, but Kronos with a bottle, as soon as he's got mana for both spells, can easily kill Rhapsody if he wants to drop the Chrono Field on her. So Z Freak is going to have to play very, very carefully. He's in quite the precarious situation in the bottom lane. And the rewind on the splash as well. I'm surprised. Oh, 71 oh, is playing really well, parasite. but he might be in trouble here. Yeah, he's definitely in some trouble. Staccato stuns are coming out. Gonna get the time leap. Is probably gonna need to use the Chrono Field as he is gonna get the bottle. And there's the mana for it. Don't get distracted by that. Here comes Gauntlet as well. Limp going to go for the blind hook. The face hug comes in, and the final auto attacks are going to be coming in by way of Z Freak as four players converge on that bottom lane, and down goes the suicide. That is okay, though, to be honest. They devoted a lot of resources sure. to that kill. Sure, the Chrono is down right now, but if you look at it, like they don't have too many spots for a Chrono Sphere right now anyways, at least not levels in it. So it's not a huge problem that Chronos doesn't have that available. Sure, it's a kill for his Jeep. It's definitely good, but it's actually not that huge of a lead that they gain out of it. And I have to say, I was really impressed with 071. Usually, you would see from an SEA player, from my experience, you would see the following. He uses the entire bottle on full HP to get full mana <laughs> and goes full out on the Rhapsody. Sure. Kills her, gets killed in the process. That's like the usual style. And instead, he was very patient, waited actually with some nice stacks already going on and being farmed as well by the Magnus here. And instead he waited patiently and almost survived because of that, because he used the bottles when he lost HP instead of using it only for his mom. There you go, the patience paying off right there by making it take just a little bit longer, forcing Limp out of that middle lane. They get the kill in the end, but as it stands, uh, that tower in the top lane going the way of MRR is able to bring them a little bit of a gold lead here as the resources are still relatively even. But Puppet Master sitting on 370 gold per minute, and of course the Magnus working on the stacks as you said. 382 gold per minute. That's 1800 gold saved up. Yep. Do you want to see a portal key come out right here, or does he need more build up? I want to see a portal key because Puppet Master has the skill set to cope with kills. So does Engineer and Tortre. What they need right now is levels on the supports. It's extremely important for them to get those sure. levels. Then, with a PK on the Magnus, they will be able to do huge pressure on SG, I feel. Yeah, there's definitely going to be the opportunity for initiation once that PK comes into effect. And right now, Chessie already may be building toward that uh, fear of the initiation. He's picking up a beast arc here, and will be going for a Helm of the Black Legion yep. even before Boots. But he wouldn't be the target to go for anyways. Yeah, what so they usually would do is they initiate with a Magnus and kill one target right away. That can be the Gauntlet even. That can definitely be Corrupted Disciple or Rhapsody. If they find the Parasite, go for it. <laughs> then Kronos jumps together with them, but uses the Chronosphere on different targets to block them out of the fight. After that, they can either disengage or with low cooldowns, maybe re-engage. Sure. So and that would definitely be a way to get towers or good team fights. 
Absolutely. So that leaves me kind of scratching my head almost a little bit right here with Kraken's decision to go that home of the Black Legion. Normally, when we see Lem playing the zero, early steam boots and an early portal key to get the initiation is what he likes to look for. But going for the helm of the Black Legion this time, maybe just a little bit worried about uh, that Magnus, maybe worried about the Puppet Master, and of course just the general amounts of CC that are coming yep. out from this team with things like a Chrono Field and an Energy Field. He is definitely worried. Obviously, he doesn't have the vestments just yet. He might even pick them up before boots, to be honest. Wow. Um, I think that. If they if they have one side devotes their energy and their spells to Kraken, he will still fall. But then they won't have the spells for other teammates, of course. So I do understand this decision. I can't really say whether I agree or not, but we know why he go does pick boots up before investments. So if they have one side wants to do anything, they could actually go right now with a Puppet Master ulti, for instance. However, Puppet Master obviously found the jungle, waiting for the lane to come back. Three archers and a catapult for him. That's going to be a lot of gold. Yeah, going to be a lot of farm, and that'll put him actually pretty dang close to his Whispering Helm. As he, or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, Whispering Helm. As he does have the money for that right now, actually. So we'll see. Waiting Junior to pick that one up. Portal Key was acquired on Magnus as well. He's still sitting on the red boots, though, so... It's going to be a little while before he's really going to be able to make effective use out of that portal key because his mana pool is so restricted right now. 390 is its a decent amount, but you're not really going to be able to use your ultimate or anything like that when it comes to that kind of a mana pool. Yeah, did he actually pick up a headshot right now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he had it from the beginning of the game. Um, there's Magnus Alti on the entrance. He's gonna, he has his portal key already. And he used his ulti on the engines now, so they're not going for aggression just yet. I wouldn't fault them for it. I think getting even more farm. They are ahead. They have a parasite against two supports, and they are ahead in gold and behind in kills. That's they're really doing weird. something right. Yeah. It's certainly working out for them, at least so far. And State Green, I think one of the reasons why State Green hasn't really gotten too aggressive yet is because they know that these teams respond to aggression quite well. They're familiar with the aggression. They know they can control the resources perhaps a little bit better. But with the early triple stacked ancients clear here, they're definitely doing a pretty good job on the side of MRR of controlling those resources. Yeah. Even though there are two Dragon Masters left from this camp, they'll come back and get those in a minute. Someone will have a very tasty dinner, yeah, that's sure. Easy but 400. I think that Corrupted is not really entering the game just yet. He's sitting on 120, 13 and 5. Um, then we, you, if we look at the GPM chart overall, we have Puppet Master and Magnus leading. And of course, uh, what you kind of expect to happen is the following SG gets two super good team fights in a row with superb initiation and coordination. Sure. They almost wipe the Hellbone side, and that's your goal lead for you, and it just completely tilts in their favor. But you don't know. I mean, they keep farming right now. They're not pressing, pressuring the issue or pressing the issue here, MRR that is. So. Just with that being said, though, they might go on the crack. There's Chrome. They are indeed as well. Crack it down here. Oh, nice two man stun coming in from Magnus. And Puppet Master can be able to get the show down on the crack. And he's going to drop. Here comes Gauntlet. He's got the haste. Beautiful disjoint coming in from Cheetah 1X. The grapple onto Engineer, but it's time to disengage for the State Green squad. Both teams going to fall back, but MRR, they're quite happy with that trade. What is going on? That was that was really good. Obviously, I mean, it's just pressing one key, but still, he had the presence of mind. And as I said, if you th if they devote their energy on the Kraken, they're gonna bring him down, Helm of the Black Legion or sure. not. And they didn't even need to pursue after that. Parasite was dropping so low just from the AOE that he wasn't even daring to go further. And now the two Dragon Masters here for the Puppet Master. Yeah, he got that tasty dinner as you were talking about, and that's going to put him closer to his next item. But uh, well played, and just a pretty good showing right here from MRR. They showed earlier on in their matches that they've definitely got some fight in them, and uh, now that they're facing a considerably tougher opponent in State Green, they've still got that composure. So the early game probably split even maybe a little bit toward MRR right here, but as we progress into the later stage of this game, it's going to be really important that MRR is able to come keep up with the resource control and keep their composure against what is arguably the strongest team in the world. Yep, and I have to say MRR is completely in the comfort zone. From the top four of Southeast Asian teams, MRR as to why uh, the former Orange, now ADN, and Double Master, they are the ones that love to farm stacks the most. And as you've seen, they have had so many stacks early on in the game with their dual support instead of a jungler. I was talking with Nick earlier with Breaky that Color X is definitely a known player for his Ophelia, for instance. Not so sure. much the other junglers, but definitely Ophelia. But 
they also are very proficient at this style of farming stacks again, and that's exactly what they did with Torture and Engie here right now. A triple stack hard cam just for the two supports, they're level 5 and 6 right now. That's really good. Yeah, and gotta make sure to get those levels, especially on Engineer. If you can get like level 11 or something, that's a beautiful time. You can even pick up a portal key and whatnot. Your Engineer is going to go to contribute hunt. And with a hero like Torture as well, you throw farm on that one and he's going to be able to do more damage. And not to mention, you throw the items on him and he's going to be able to help your team out significantly. So, good job allocating at least some of their resources there for right now. But back into this uh, bottom lane, Kronos is having a significantly better time as a suicide hero than his uh, opponent there in Swinemug. Might get a little bit worse as a wild hunter is coming on in. Gauntlet is here as well, but on the other side, MRR is looking to respond. Will Kronos turn this one around? Ooh, time leaps backwards, so he wasn't confident in actually turning that one yep. around. No and just goes for the in. safe play. Yeah, no TP's coming in from MRR. They're perfect content with what's going on right now because they get another kill from a solo Magnus killing a Corrupted Disciple. As I said, he is not, not entering game. He doesn't find space right now, Corrupted that is. And with the DD and the ultimate, and that was a level 1 ultimate, Corrupted just drops. Next item for Magnus, what do you think? Oh, actually, he's going to gank bottom before I. we should talk yeah, about that. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and uh, probably try to set up a double stun here. We'll see if he's going to be able to do it. There it is. They already lose Engineer, but if they can get some counter kills here, it will be worth it. Puppet Master comes on in. Puppet Show on to Kraken, and down he goes. Two kills for MRR, and there's a TP coming in right here. This should be Swindle Melons, and he's going to open up with the Electric Tide. Not going to be able to get any of these kills. Kronos and Magnus should be able to easily make their way on out of there. So once again, a situation that results in a two-for-one trade favoring MRR yep. as they've opened up this resource lead to nearly 4,000. And we've been talking about the aggressive play of, of Southeast Asian teams before, and I think this was a really good example for it because Kronos actually jumped into the Kraken outfit. And I think he did this on purpose because he wants to get extra damage in and not circle around the LT and wait for it to be over. So that is something I don't think you... You will rarely see international teams have Chrono <laughs> players that jump into a Kraken LT. Obviously he didn't jump right into it, but yeah, eventually he got stunned by it as well. But they got kills out from it, so sure. it's a different mindset, it's a different approach to the game. I'm very happy that there's going to be no Grave Locket on the Puppet Master. Instead he's going for a fast shroud, something we see on almost every single Puppet Master in the world. And uh, he has been on two kills bottom and killed the enemy carry twice, the Kraken. Yeah, the rotation coming out of MRR has been superb. Yep. They are teleporting into these lanes and getting kills clean. They're not sticking around too long. We saw it there with Kronos when the Engineer was going to be coming in. He falls back. He's not going to try to force something that he's not able to take off. He's not going to waste time, give State Green the opportunity to get a kill there. They're taking the correct plays, and this is some of the best play that I've seen from the guys at MRR so far. Yep, I definitely agree. They're really having it together right now. I still think that it could happen that we have like two team fights or something with the Codex from Paris like coming up where everything suddenly bursts and they fall completely apart and then SG is on the lead again. But I hope that we're going to see a tight game here that goes to a very late stage of the game. Then again, it would probably favor the Hellborn side. Sure. Kraken is not an ultimately hard carry. He can carry very hard, don't get me wrong. With, demo with uh, Demonic Breastplate, etc., he is able to, to deal a lot of damage and tank a lot of damage as well in the late Absolutely. game. Absolutely. But the Corrupted is not going to find a window anytime soon, sitting on 170. He probably claimed the bottom lane, saying, you're going to die there anyway, so let me try and get some farm here. Yeah, it's definitely going to need to get some space here for Swindamons. Get the basics. Something like an Energizer is core on this hero. Yep. But until you get that, you're not even thinking about getting something like a Firebrand or a Shrunken Head. Items that are going to need to come out to have any kind of potential to get damage onto this Hellborn team. So right now, both of these teams just continue to farm out, posturing a bit, as Magnus is going to go in for a stun in the middle lane. I was kind of watching him do that, but uh, definitely looks like Cheetowan is getting a little bit antsy in the mid. Oh yeah, definitely is, and he's a generally, he generally is a player like this as well. Like he always wants to make action happening. He's like all over the place. But there's a shroud puppet here right yeah, now. Yeah, I just heard that one as well as an energizer going off. But stay green. They were well informed with that situation. Z Freak had just dropped the lane ward here. It's gonna need to be countered by engineers. He's walking right by it. I'm not sure if Eversay actually caught wind of this one. But maybe he's going to be able to get a counter ward right here. It's something that needs to happen because State Green's got all the information in the world here right now. 
Tank is currently fine. I would like to go back to the Magnus. What do you think is going to be his next item? Is he going to go for the standard tablet? Is he going to try to go for a demonic breastplate or the usual shrunken head? Oh man, I mean, there's a lot of different options right here for Magnus. And I, I think that something like that tablet could be really good against a Kraken, against a Corrupted Disciple. That additional yep. mobility is going to be exceedingly important. Whereas something like a Shrunken Head is not going to be as important there. At least not as your second item. So I'd like to see the tablet coming out. I'm not sure. I think that Shrunken could actually do a lot for the Magnus. And so far, as with the Steamboat's intelligence and the power supply, is going to be able to st stun three times in a team fight. And that could actually be a huge, a huge thing here for the Hellbound side because they can make a lot of use between Torture, Engineer, and Puppet. Even Cronus to an extent, they can make a lot of use out of Magnus' stunts, not even necessarily his ultimate. So, BKB or Shrunken could definitely be a good item here, but I also agree Tablet is also a good item against, as you mentioned, heroes like Crack, the Kraken Ultimate mostly. So, yep, yeah, let's see what he goes for. He bought something. Probably a tablet then. Yeah, not sure. That'll be flying out on the courier here. Because he bought a 2k item with the gold that he had, so it kind of must a be a tablet, yes. Most likely, so we'll see that in a minute. Now, Stay Green, they were kind of congregating in that middle lane for a significant amount of time. Looking like they wanted to group up and push down their first tower of the game, but unfortunately, they were not able to get into a location where they got a read on the Magmus, and they yep. know the power of a Magmus ultimate. Coming in right there could have very well turned that one around, so they're not going to go ahead and force the situation there. Colin was hanging out in the trees looking for somebody to farm the creep wave up top, but MRI's not falling for the bait. No, Puppet Master having very good game sense. No lane ward here for him, but DQ or DQ is definitely on top of his game right now. He's sitting at 1-0 one and 1 over almost 500 GPM, and he doesn't, like, I really like to see this, that before he had the Shroud, he was ganking twice bottom. That with the Shroud, he tried to gank once middle. It didn't work. Now he's just farming. And it's not desperation or something. It's calculated moves out of him. And he's doing it correctly. Oh, right now, they're looking like they might finally set up a push middle. But it's going to need to come a little bit sooner than anticipated. As oh. Kronos leaps on out. Gets a beautiful Chrono Field. Magnus is going to be going on in here. Morky's into the Chrono Field. Gets the stun on the three. Players. Lots of damage coming out. Cheetah One's going to be the first one to fall here. Puppet Master going to be trying to turn this around. Getting a kill on the Kraken is what he's looking for. But Kraken is going to escape. And now the Helmborn team in full retreat. As that one was just a little bit botched. It looked like they had the possibility. But the stun wasn't perfect for Magnus. And the response from State Green was. Yeah, I feel like Magnus should have stunned right away to the Chrono. But then exactly. again, he did get the Rhapsody with the stun after she used LT. So that was very good, of course. So it was a weird location to fight for sure. Let's see in the replay here. So we see the Chrono Bubble, as you mentioned. Really good positioning here. But Engineer's Keg puts, it, puts the heroes away from the ultimate of Magnus. And that's the problem here because Crack is not going to die from the Puppet LT here with the tanky build that he went for because Engineer kegged him away earlier in the LT. There you go, right now State Green going to go ahead and convert that one into a kill on the tower. So they're able to put themselves on the board in that regard and uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of momentum shift there as the gold and experience resources start to even out here. And now you got to say, can MRR remain composed after a team fight like that? Something that's definitely going to be a little bit of an impact on their team. Now, with your knowledge of this squad, are they going to be able to remain together after that? I think they will, because I think they actually know that they're still slightly ahead in terms of gold and experience. Parasite is level 12, opposed to a level 7 Engineer and 7 Torturer, but it was worse before. Actually, they do have decent levels on Engineer and Torturer right now. I think that they are on... I think they're enjoying this game right now, and this is very important. I think they're where they want to be. And I mean, that's what it's all about in the end, is having fun, playing the video game that you love. And uh, if you're enjoying it, then you keep on doing it. And if you end up winning, you know, your share of $183,000, then you end up winning it. But right now, that uh, 2,000 gold item that you were referring to was actually a blessed orb. Yep. So, going to be making that into what appears to be a rather early shoot stick. Or? It's going to be a hex. Uh, I really hope that we don't, the Caldra, I really hope that we're not going to see a... Uh, a null stone here out of Magnus, that would be kind of unfortunate. Or it could be a Grimoire, of course, yeah. but then you usually go for the Light Brand first. Then again, if he wants to have some additional tankiness, he's going to go for the uh, Ultimate Orb. But 
Other than that, one of the least oh, cost. Bottom of lane, Kronos is being initiated off. The, the Kraken ultimate is there. Kronos is trying to live with the rewinds here. Gonna get the blink on out. The Chrono field is being set up as well, and Kraken is taking a ton of damage. Engineer gonna lay down the defensive ultimate as well. And Nova, can we get a clap for those rewinds? That was insane. That was insane, but even more so the the keg from Engineer. It was that a god was beautiful. Keg. That was absolutely amazing. So let's see in the replay here. Is the initiation? A really good initiation, of course. There's Kraken ulti, everything blown from the Parasite. Doesn't have too many rewinds right now, but now... Yeah. Actually, it was yeah, just it was a very a good play. A little bit of rewinds right there. And yep. Just a really good play coming out yeah. here. Two it against three, so everything rewinds. used on the Kronos, and he survives. Well done, well done, and MRR showing exactly what we've always known about the Southeast Asian teams. They have the capability of making those massive individual plays and placing those spells correctly. And they're showing right now that they've actually got the complete packages. 24 minutes into the game, things are about even. But Puppet Master about to finish up a shrunken head, and that's going to be a big cue for yep. the Hellborn team to get a little bit more aggressive. And the interesting part is that they don't even have to go aggressive with that. They can actually... Puppet is so safe right now with some decent words being placed up. Yeah. Talking about words, both teams have pretty good words here, but with some good words set up here from his Hellborn team, he's going to be so safe that he can fire him up for a long time. And Freck, we saw him on the bottom lane die two times. He got three assists in the mid lane, but after that, he's still only 310 GPM. If Puppet actually goes over 500, he will be significantly stronger in team fights than Kraken. So MRR could drag this out a little bit longer, let's say about 7 to 10 more minutes and then go for team fight items sure. with one more big core item on the Magnus and levels on the Magnus because he's 14, that's two levels away from 16. With a level 16 Magnus, 16 plus with another core item and Puppet Master having farmed another core item until then, they are in super good shape to wipe the Legion team. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if they're going to be the patient or if they're going to go ahead and get a little bit more aggressive. But right now, State Green's looking to take the fight to them, or at least to the top tower, as four players are here in position. Swindermons has just TP'd, and uh, Swindle's actually recovered a little bit in terms of farm. Does have the Energizer, and he's making yep. his way toward a shrunken head. But we'll see if now if MRR is going to put up a fight for this top tower. Stay green, they're either going home with a tower or they're going home having a team fight. Right now it's actually Rhapsody being stringed up. There's the shrunken head going off. Gauntlet looking to use the ultimate. He was actually already used it. There's the hook going out. Did not hit. And Magma's going to go down as a result. Gauntlet goes down as a result of the Magma's ultimate. Here comes Swinemons, looking to put in as much damage as possible. But Kronos gets the beautiful Chrono Field. Puppet Master turns this one around, putting in the damage. And there's the oh, big line stun. Three men go down. Swin or excuse me, uh, Parasite going to go ahead and take out into a Minotaur. He's going to be running. Splits up from his teammate. The only man from State Green to survive that is going to be Kraken. A massive team fight, massive plays from Cheetah One X. Wow. Everybody on MRR just wow. did absolutely beautiful in that, that team fight. That was so amazing. Let's see in the replay here. I just wanted to say Puppet Master needs to be on top of his game right now. If he uses his BKB too late, it's going to be a disaster, and he uses it just in time. time. A beautiful Magnus ulti, actually a waste from the Puppet Master using his ulti on an already dead gauntlet, but doesn't matter. Now the Chronosphere is what matters. Puppet gets out with the Shroud, then Kronos and uses look at the, the line end. right here. Wow, and that's a perfect line for another Magma stun. And just that was just beautiful. Gorgeous. They convert that one back into the live game now with a tower kill and now a Concord. Yep. So they're going to go ahead and not only are they going to be able to pick up another big item on Magnus, another big item on Puppet Master, but they're going to be able to get a token of life. Another Absolutely. man to be added into this team fight. Absolutely, like the, one of the weaknesses of Asian teams was always that they don't really know what to do with their wins that they get out of their individual sure. play. For instance, you get some really good kills like this here right now and Absolutely. then they like spread over the map and start to farm instead of get a tower or get a Congor. So they have improved over the time and that is really good to see. And I mean, it's really bad news for SG fans right now as they are significantly behind. Not because they're 5,000 gold behind, that's not much, but because they are facing this Puppet Master with 2,300 gold and a token. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, but the team composition that they're using and the team composition that they're going to be facing. Kronos and Puppet Master, huge amounts of crown control that are going to be coming out versus somebody like this Corrupted Disciple. That's going to need mobility, going to need time in order to put out his damage with that conduit and with that overload. 
on the other side. I mean, Kraken, he's built into a Helm of the Black Legion. Just barely picked the portal key now. It's not like he's going the Trixie build into a Demonic Breastplate. He's not going to be going man mode here on this guy. He's not going to be putting out as much damage. He's there for the CC. Yep. And where does the damage come from? Gauntlet's there, there for the CC. <laughs> Kraken's there for the CC. You barely got, what, a uh, Codex level, like, four? Yeah, four on Parasite. That's your source of damage. Yep. Parasite is the main source of damage here, so they're banking and they're on going this place. In. They're looking for it right now as Kraken is going to go ahead and back up. Chrono could not find an area in which he wanted to drop his ultimate. So MRR going to settle for the Tower Deny. Stay Green was looking like they might have wanted to re-engage right here. But they're just a little bit, uh, maybe maybe a little bit lack of confidence coming out from Stay Green as they're not sure they can find that perfect team fight. And they've got all the information they needed from the Ward of Science from Seafreak in two different locations scouting out the MRR squad. Yep, I definitely agree. And I mean, what I like to see so much here is that the two supports actually have a significant impact on the game opposed to a parasite. And we almost always see a jungler overtaking the two supports, as we talked about before. What is Minots doing right here? Gonna take a stun. He's actually in a lot of trouble. Stay Green could be setting up this as a bait. And Kraken's gonna release the Kraken on the backside here. Magnus Ultimate is gonna go off though. Gonna be able to take out Parasite as well as Gauntlet here. And Puppet Master cleans up Kraken. Puppet gonna take a lot of damage from a fully charged up Corrupted Disciple though. Puppet gonna be able to get the Shroud down. Chronos should be able to take out the Rhapsody. And now Corrupted Disciple in some trouble himself. He's going hard onto the Magnus. Chronos gonna be coming back in here. The Electric Titan goes off. Oh, Chrono's gonna go down, but the full five-man wipe coming in at the hands of Cheetawan and his good buddy Puppet Master. Another really good team fight for MRR here, and I have to say, it's the, it's, I'm, I'm sure that they're starting to get really worried right now. Usually their Absolutely. strength, if they're losing in the early game, which actually was something that happens quite often, if they lose in the early game, their team fights are what make them come back into many, many games. Sure. And so that you look, as we talked about earlier, you look at gold leads and experience leads and you're like, it doesn't really matter because SG is definitely capable of coming easily back into the game. Let's look at the replay. Yeah, and right here, you got to kind of wonder what Minox was doing right there. He's going to get opened up on the Chrono Field, going to be able to catch two as Swinemons is charging up in the background. But the Magmus Ultimate, that is what is going on in the background right there. Able to take out the two big guys, Gauntlet and Kraken. And at this point, it's all over for MRR as they're trying to run. And once again, another beautiful Magmus stun coming in, helping to lock down Corrupted Disciple and helping to get the full five man. Unfortunately, Chrono comes in a little bit too early and does go down right there. Yep. But five-man wipe's a five-man wipe. And right now we go back into the live game as Swindlemons is still looking for that shrunken head. How big of an item is that going to be when he's able to finish that up? Well, it's not going to matter right here as he does get sheeped out. That brand new sheep stick and we're going oh, to do another fight. Misses. Beautiful keg as that would have saved Corrupted Disciple. But Gauntlet misses that hook. Rhapsody going down as well on the backside. Magnus is going to be taken out. And Gauntlet looking to turn this one around. One buyback coming in from Swindlemons. A beautiful crack and ultimate as well. Will it be enough damage? Down goes both the supports here for the Hellborn team. Gauntlet trying to survive. Kronos is going to get hooked. But Kronos should be able to finish off this Gauntlet. Going to be Puppet Master actually. So even with a buyback, this is now going to be a four for three exchange. And Puppet Master says, okay, we're just going to fall back and take the tower. We come out way on top of that one, especially with the buyback from Swindlemons. But the fake back is here. Swindlemons going on in. Kraken, unfortunately, going to miss the Tsunami Charge. No, he didn't use it yet. There's the Tsunami Charge on the Puppet Master. He's shrouded up. He doesn't want to lose the token here. And Kraken is going to go down. Kronos is going to need to help, perhaps. But no, State Green is not looking to re-engage. Kronos is looking to find the flank. Tower goes down. One TP already. Portal key away from Kraken. And that's going to be the end of that fight. Yeah, very long, drawn-out sequence. As we can see in the replay here, the instant sheep on the on the Corrupted, as you mentioned earlier. And the hook was so close. Perfect oh, catch so here. So close. Really close. And another really good chrono field. Again, catching three heroes just on the outer borders. Perfect placement. Magmus getting completely obliterated on the sidelines, but Parasite had to use everything for that. And so there's nothing the, left on the puppet. The buyback comes in right here. The Kraken ultimate is absolutely gorgeous. Yep. That's the only thing that keeps Stay Green in this fight, but it's still not enough. Yep. And, uh, so getting back into the live game right here.
I know this would usually be a question that you would ask me, but what do you think SG can actually do here in order to come back? Because they are obviously far behind. They are far behind, but you got to be receiving the aggression at this point. I think you have to maybe fall back into your own towers and say, we're going to try to play the resource game as much as we can. Try to not fall any further behind and then fight in our towers, fight in our base and get ourselves the biggest advantage we can when we do have to take those team fights to defend racks. Yeah, I agree with that. One problem I see, though, is that both Magmas with his passive and Puppet are two stronger farmers sure. than Kraken and Corrupt the Disciple to an extent. Kraken does have his splash, of course, but I don't know. Like, it, I think it's going to be extremely hard to play a resource game here. We do have a Codex level 5 now, I believe, on Parasite. So with that, Corrupt it? Yeah, yeah Corrupt is definitely in some trouble down here in the bottom lane. Didn't need the sheep stick this time. It was just going to be Mr. Kronos coming in with that first hit bash. And, of course, with the recent change to the way that his bash works, you can count that down. And, of course, it does tick down with time as well. So getting that first hit bash, that's a pretty big deal as Swindlemons will go down for the fifth time in this game. 1-5-2, and two, no impact in this game whatsoever. Yep. And I really feel sorry for all the people that like locked off the stream or just shut it down because they thought okay MRR versus SG that's gonna sure. be an easy stomp here for SG 15 minutes I'm gonna uh, get back to the stream later and they're missing out on a pretty interesting match I wouldn't say awesome match because it is somewhat one-sided but it is definitely very interesting to see that SG of all teams is struggling for the second time today against the Southeast Asian team the first game against ADN former Orange they were able to close it out in the end a 5-5 Dr. Repulsor from Swindlemelons actually went to 10-5 and five, and the enemy carry was shut down significantly three or four times in a row, I should say. I'm not entirely sure, but are they able to make this here as well? Are they able to make a comeback like this? Well, it's certainly a possibility still, but when you're going up against a Puppet Master that's just finished up not only a Genjiro, but a Symbol of Rage, Yeah. well, I don't know how you're going to kill him. Yeah, You've I'm got tons sure. of lockdown there with Kraken and Gauntlet, but once again, it goes back to the damage. This is a Puppet Master sitting on 2300 HP with multiple ways to regenerate that HP if he can get his drunken head off, if he can get that symbol of rage off. So we'll see. It's going to be a tall order for the guys in SG. The problem is that they basically need to have a Kraken charge on the Puppet Master and then use the entire Parasite Plus X burst, maybe some from Gauntlet as well. And, uh, to bring down the puppet before he can pop his shrunk head or his symbol of rage. And there's yeah. a refresher. In, yeah, there's <laughs> a refresher now. So, I mean, this has been a more and more common build, something that was uh, maybe pioneered a little bit by Keizu, of course, of Sync Esports, but definitely getting to be a little bit more common as the, the double bubble, as we've liked to have called it, might be making a little bit of an appearance here as Kronos is scouting out the middle lane. He was looking like he wanted to try to find a kill here, but of course Swindlebuns is able to jet on out of there. Not going to be dying anytime soon. And I'm sure that Swindle hopes right now that, or wish right now that he wouldn't have banned Surs, but had a Surs himself. Because yeah. Having the double bubble themselves, or at least also having it, is, it's a pretty huge thing. Or even taking that Puppet Master for a couple of seconds. That would, would be pretty nice here for them to add some damage, which is sur uh, surely what they lack. Not bad at all, and right now it looks like MRR might be going for a deny. They're going to go ahead and get that deny, actually. But here comes the first bubble. They're going to catch Swindlemelons. Here comes the energy field as well as the Kraken ultimate in the background. Gauntlet going to be coming in. Magnus with a beautiful stun and the ultimate, though. Great Corrupted Disciple is going to go down. Rax is going to fall as well. And now it's going to be Gauntlet taking the damage. The second bubble comes in. Beautiful stuns from Torture as he's going hard with the Impalement and the Torment. Another stun and another 5 GG Web Blade. That's it. GG Web well played, Nova, and there you go. Once What's again, going the Southeast on? Okay. Asian teams are in Look at them, they're happy. They are excited. They just took down the number one team in yes. the world. As I said, they're enjoying the game right now, and we see why. Not just because they won, but they played their own style. They Absolutely. did not play an international style, and that's why we see a better performance from them. They played their own style. They came out and won game number one in their own style. But there is still another game to be played yep. in this series. And it is going to be so interesting. We're taking a look here at the last team fight once more. Deny starts that out. There's the Chrono Field on to Corrupt the Disciple. But Nova, tell me what you see. 
<laughs> no problem. So grab the drops pretty quickly. There's such a resource lead right now in terms of items, etc., that it doesn't really matter how they execute the other spells. Still, they use it very, very well. Like the Chronos here can't afford to have two teammates in his own bubble because there's only three heroes left on the enemy team. Sure. Torsha being outside, having so much damage himself, even being a support. And the interesting part is that Magnus with the Hex was almost like, what was that? Like 0 0.3, 0 0.5 seconds yeah. on the Rhapsody? Like, their fingers are warm. They're ready, They've man. got the they're mechanics, ready. and they're good to go. They're tough after that game, and now it's going to be, can they do it again? Can they take down the Green Giant once more? We'll see. And we'll have to see. Game 2 is going to be coming up here in a moment. Will stay Green rebound, or will the guys from Neo MRR be able to close this one out in a huge upset 2-0? They're already one way there. We'll be back with more from the Haunter World Finals in just a minute. Or not. At some point. Yeah. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Greg CBK here, and Santa here, looking to fly. Holy crap, what a result we just had right there. Stay Korean losing to MRR, game number one. What happened, man? I mean, Stay Green had a really shitty draft, in my opinion. It, it just wasn't a typical Kyle draft. He normally has the advantage through the draft, but this time, you see MRR, they're adapting a little bit of Sync's playstyle and picking very similar to them. And so far in the tournament, Puppet Master and Kronos on the same team has not lost a single game. Yeah, you were mentioning that. I mean, I think Puppet Master alone is a very, very high win percentage. As we might have even expected, he's been a lot of hype going into this event. So, not too surprising, but yeah, that combo, it's deadly, man. I mean, you, you let a team get that, and even if you're stay green, clearly that's going to be an issue. So, obviously, we're all here also to talk about uh, the other matchups that are happening. Of course, other, uh, three other games happening. Uh, the first one is actually Sync versus S2Y. That one did end. Sync Esports 2 nothing over S2Y. I don't know if you had any, any more information actually on that game number one there. Um, number one, they they had a ward. They placed behind a tier one tower and got a first blood on the Moon Queen. We talked a little bit about the Moon Queen in the uh, previous game and how, they, you know, it's a Moon Queen. It's a scary hero to face. But Sync seemed to know how to deal with it and they did it very effectively. That they did, that they did. So again, Sinky Esports game two, I believe, was a little bit more one-sided in the end. And so they took care of business, two games to nothing. So Sinky Esports, uh, they're on top now. I believe that puts them actually at both 2-0. and oh, So they got six points, I believe. Of course, they got their big matchup against BMG next. That And it's setting up perfectly because BMG also 2 nothing against Turtle Master. But however, game number one especially, I was actually over here in the player area watching that one from behind. Oh my god, the emotion of Turtle Master especially. Those guys love to just taunt their opponents. They were jumping up and down. They were like pointing towards BMG over here and said, yeah, we killed you. In the end, BMG won, but it was still fun to watch that. Yeah, there was a big black hole at the 35 minute mark, I think you brought up, that really, really swayed the game back into their favor, so. Well, that was fun to see. Uh, anything else on that series? I don't know if you have watched that series at all, or? No, I was over at the other side, actually, watching ADN versus Cats, which was a really good game. It was very, very even, but eventually L, playing that Sand Wraith, managed to pull through and we bring them to the win. WTF doing work. So, uh, so ADN one game number one. I believe they're in game number two as well uh, right now. So ADN up one nothing over Cats, and then of course you got Stay Green versus MRR. They're going to be going to game number two. Holy crap! What a game that's going to be. Hey, Super KG, come over here. Let's let's get Super KG out of here real quickly. Actually, we're in the player area as you can see. How you feeling, man? I feel great. Yeah, I feel awesome right now. Yeah. The environment here. I mean, what is it like playing with these lights and the sound and everything? Uh, it's all good. It's not too bad. So it's pretty nice, though. Like you can watch and see what's going on. So you guys are obviously up to a very good start. Uh, we casted your first match. You were a little shaky early on. S2Y actually got a decent lead very early on, but once you got it going, you guys seemed like you were taking care of business. Is it safe to say it went as planned? Yeah. Uh, we didn't really be afraid that or anything like we just played our game and yeah we did our best pretty much. that you did and of course then you won the following series I was saying though I don't know if you guys even noticed that turtle masters they were emotional they were jumping up and down pointing at you guys did you even see that 
Uh, no, we didn't notice. <laughs> Took care of business. So uh, you beat both the Southeast Asian teams. Do you think that they were still better than you expected, or was it really as you expected? I think it was as we expected, but there's been a few upsets in other teams, so I guess they're better than expected. I assume you're talking about MRR against Stay Green. Yeah, and also the game uh, Sync versus uh, Turtle Masters. Uh, ADN. ADN. Yeah, it was Sync won that one, but ADN was actually up early on. That was actually a close game, so I believe. Yeah, Sync, Sync won the series 2 nothing though. I believe. Am I wrong on that? Wrong. Did ADN win the first game? Hey, Insania. Did who did wait? Sync's in your group. So what do you say? <laughs> Turtle Master. That's right. They played, but Sync won that one, two nothing though. I thought oh, it, was it wasn't one one. Yeah. Sync was one one. That's right. Wow. Okay. So that's right. So you guys now you you're matched up against Sync Esports next. That it helps that you now they lost that game obviously. But what do you think of that matchup? Are you ready for it? Yeah, we're totally ready. Like if we only win one game, we're gonna go straight to the semifinals. So that's great. Like we just need to play like we did now and then win it. Take your business. Have you guys prepped for Sync Esports? Anything specific? I don't think we have anything specific. We're just going to do what we do best. Play our game. Play your game. Get some hooks in there, right? Yeah, don't... Ah, that wasn't awkward. All right. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Or, I don't know why I'm saying that, but anyways, obviously, we're having a lot of fun here. We're having a blast. Got a great crowd here. And join Heroes of the Earth with us. Stay tuned, guys. We got we got uh, Stay Green versus MRR up next game, too. And then eventually, BMG versus Sync. But Stay Green, MRR, game two. MRR up one nothing. Wow, you don't want to miss it, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back.